Hamas flags fly defiantly from the Alabas Minaret on Umar al-Muqtad Street, a banner of resistance. And in the shadow of the mosque, a stark example of what that resistance has brought upon the heads of the citizens of Gaza. At Friday prayers today, the overspill of worshippers knelt in the rubble of the police station next door, in which nine Hamas policemen died. The Imam's sermon paid tribute to the resilience of the Palestinian people and strongly criticized the Muslim world for failing to stop the onslaught. Hamas flags don't necessarily mean the mosque's Hamas, but all we spoke to here supported the movement's defiance to the hilt and denied persistent allegations that its fighters had used civilians as human shields. Hamas is, uh, is our youth, is, is, our, is our sons, so we have to protect them. This is not from uh, another planet. They are our sons. This is, I, I send, I send. Next year, I will send my son to, to fight with Hamas. This is our son. This is my son. And what happens if he becomes a Shahid, a martyr? Oh, this is a, a great hope. This is my great hope. This is or a big hope. This is for me, this is a big hope to die as a martyr. Nobody come to us and said, we, Hamas, we want to fire rockets from your home. No, I didn't say that. But still your house was hit. Yeah. Why? Hamas police are bruised and battered, but they're back and busy on the streets of Gaza. But just because the war is over doesn't mean the bloodletting has stopped. In fact, the war has served to reignite the embers of the Palestinian civil war. This is where the Hamas interior minister, Saeed Siam, was killed in an Israeli airstrike along with his son, his brother and two other senior Hamas officials. Saeed Siam was in charge of 13,000 armed security men and was also the architect of the Hamas coup against its rival party Fatah 18 months ago. And that could be one reason why Hamas has accused Fatah spies of collaborating with Israel to have him taken out. Israeli intelligence needs paid informers here in Gaza. They're key to its operations. And since the war, dozens have been arrested. They will go to the court and they will have an independent uh, judge and we'll uh, wait and say. Are they shot? When the uh, judge said uh, his opinion, we will respect them. So if the judge says they should be put to death, they will be? We won't respect it. I asked him to respond to accusations that Hamas had used civilians as cover. I can see at this point, the Israeli leaders is lying. This is black propaganda. On the northern outskirts of Gaza City, I went to a residential neighborhood flattened by Israeli bombs. I wanted to find out why. Locals were scared to talk openly but they showed me a house they said Hamas had used to fire rockets at Israeli troops. We've had to protect this man's identity. One of my neighbors told the men from Hamas, please don't fire your rockets here. We're afraid for our children and our families. Please take them far away from here. This place is full of people. Hamas punished him and hit him, and then they shot his son in the leg. I was also told that Fatah leaders here were being hunted down. Hamas, people said, are on the warpath and have eyes everywhere. As for us, we've been free to move around and talk to whom we pleased. Although for a while today, Hamas internal security did follow our vehicle. They disappeared when we complained to the Hamas government spokesman. The people here do not have that luxury. Jonathan Miller, Channel 4 News, Gaza.